I am a college professor by trade, and in the summer of 1999, I was the advisor to the gay student group at the time. They had done a drag show, a tiny little campus drag show the year before, and they wanted to make it bigger. As their advisor, I told them, yeah, y'all, let's do it. It's going to cost about $500, though. So if you want to do it bigger, you're going to need sound and lights and technical aspects. Me, being the student affairs person that I am, I was like, I need to motivate these students. How can I motivate them? And I told them, if you raise the money, I'll get in drag. I'll do the show in drag. They had the money the next week. I actually did not like drag at first. I was like, it was a little too gay for me, but all of my friends were doing drag, and I just like did it at a bar in um, Spartanburg, South Carolina called South 29. One of my best friends in the whole wide world, we used to go to the talent show at a club called the Marquette Lounge. And we used to watch the girls entertain and we would hackle them really, really loud. And one of the girls in the competition dared us to do the talent show. And we prepared for like maybe a month. And I've been doing the talent show in drag ever since. And that was 1998. My banter on stage comes from this Coco Brew, legendary um, drag queen who's more known for doing monologues and comedy routines than traditional lip sync. Erica is like every black woman that I love. Like, it's a mixture of my mom, my sister, Beyonce, just very strong, black, powerful women. That's me, true diva. I grew up in a household where my grandmother has always taught us never be a part of copy. You always want to be the original. So no one actually inspires me to be myself because I like to go down hidden paths and leave trails for other people to follow. So I only inspire myself and inspiring in myself, it just makes me do better to be better. Well, quite literally, drag means dress resembling a girl. Uh, that's where the word came from. It was a Shakespearean stage direction. It's a creative outlet and it's a suit of armor. There are things that Patty will say and do that Pat will never say and do. Patty is much older and braver than Pat is. Drag for me is a way that I can express myself because um, as my voice of Emory, I'm very like reserved and like shy and like calm, but like drag and the Erica persona makes me like a character that I made up that I can literally be whoever I want to be. I can do what I want to do. It gives me that boost of confidence. Drag to me, just as Erica said, is self-expression. Um, I think that with the new generation, they don't understand the difference between a performer, an entertainer, a female impersonator, and what a drag entertainer is. So when you come into the art form of drag, drag is literally anything that you can do over the top. There's nothing less, more is better when you're doing drag. It doesn't matter if you have the best costumes. It doesn't matter if you have literally broke the show, you are backstage panting and you're doggone damn near dying. Someone is always gonna be unimpressed. And that should be your motivation to keep going. It's a platform for me. It allows me to accomplish things in the community that I can't do as I have. I love using drag to educate and to bring people together and to um, connect with the community. That's why I love this event so much at Clemson because it's entertainment. You know, you're gonna watch a drag show, but there may be some queer kid in that audience tonight that isn't sure that Clemson's a safe place, but they see the energy in the room, they see how people respond, and they feel a little more comfortable. I do not ever underestimate the wonderful power that I've been given as an entertainer. I love getting messages after events like this where a student says, thank you so much for coming to my college. I thought I was the only one. I now know I'm not one.